Time to learn more about the Ashes of Creation core systems. Make sure to watch to the end. Here we go. Hey, what up, boys? What's so, up? We're doing our live stream predictions a little early this month. Okay. And it's most certainly not because I'm completely and utterly out of topics to talk about. And uh, the long wait for Alpha 2 has burned me out beyond belief. No, 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 no. Okay, okay. It's because it turns out streaming daily and making YouTube videos constantly is... It, it's impossible. <laughs> I can understand, Narc. I can understand. I struggle to make, you know, one to two, maybe three videos every four days, three to four days. So, yeah, I totally get it. I totally get it. There is a limit to the humanly possible uh, abilities of each individual. Yes. But I'm sure you'll come over and check out our stream at twitch.tv forward slash Narciverse. There it is. Month, Ashes of Creation is revealing one of their most important key systems, but... Okay. But before we get into that, yes. Our beautiful patrons and coped out the wazoo Twitch subs and I would love for there you. There they to are. Grab yourself a go back, Chola, because freeholds in Ashes of Creation are more than just housing. They're more than just a crafting hub. They're more than just account progression. Here we go. Freeholds are one of the most important systems because they're one of the core systems that open us up to finally get that long-awaited node system reveal. And I there we go. Okay, okay. Freeholds. Okay, and this leads into the node system. And it's not just housing. Okay, so there's more to this than meets the eye. Let's see. I'm excited to overhype you all today <laughs> now. With all that bollocks out of the way. Yes. Uh, let's begin. Ciao. <laughs> he's so good he's so, so good we might as well start off with what on earth is a freehold well yes. a freehold in ashes of creation is a threefold <laughs> see what i did there i fucking hate this job it's <laughs> a housing plot occupying the physical open world space outside yeah. the borders of a node it's a location players can build personal artisan stations said to be the only way to obtain the best processing materials in the game and okay. it is indeed a personalized piece of land that acts as the only currently known safe zone to protect you from ashes of creation's open world pvp oh okay okay so there's a lot more to this than just housing yeah so it actually plays a mechanical role right so it's talking about processing materials you have to do that at your freehold uh it's the only safe space from pvp so it has a mechanic in that regard as well you you, you can only go to your freehold to be safe if you don't want to get wrecked out in the open world and uh yeah that's 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 really interesting i'm, I'm glad to hear that it has more of a role than just housing Ultimately, freeholds are an extremely important part of player progression, and the whole system has been in a very static place for the last two to three years, okay. as the game's been in this Alpha 2 development cycle. Freeholds didn't exist in Alpha 1. However, oh. the team did show us two updates related to both player housing and freeholds back in 2020, pre-LP. Okay. That being before Lazy Peon's video went viral, putting Ashes of Creation <laughs> in the spotlight. They explained the core mechanics behind their housing systems and a few of the nuance mechanics behind the freeholds itself but unfortunately i like that there's a whole era before lp before the lazy peon the lazy peon is really like either the biggest i mean in my opinion i would say probably the biggest but it, at least one of the biggest mmo uh video creators on youtube he's he's huge he's crazy he's He's amazing. Fortunately, because Ashes of Creation has gone through so many changes since then, yeah. with the world size tripling, some of the core node mechanics changing, and the introduction of a few additional mechanics to supplement the depth of the node system in general, there it's it hard is. to really take what was said back in 2020 as canon still. Regardless, yeah, yeah. if you guys are interested in learning all that you want about the system using autistic over analyzation <laughs> and comparison to our currently popular MMORPGs, I have a pretty nostalgic playlist on the channel that explains every possible thing and it's still pretty there you go guys if you want to go check out every single possible detail and over analyzed bit that narc has gone through he's got other videos that go through this pretty much up to date despite it being three years old yeah now what I want to do today is talk about the freeholds in relation to Arcage and what I hope we'll see from Ashes of Creation's upcoming livestream because okay. I 
don't think we're just getting freeholds as a focus this month. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. I think they're also going to supplement the showcase with some interesting look at the artisan skills as well. That would make sense because he was mentioning that the freeholds, one of their mechanics is like processing materials. So as part of that, I would think, yeah, the artisan skills would be relevant and, and included. So yeah, that's a good point. We might get a big, deep look at artisan skills in Ashes of Creation. Usually I do one of them cringe Super Smash Bros transitions to move us over to a new segment, but to be <laughs> honest, I'm thinking about retiring that particular format for now because I'm just bored of it, to be honest. Okay. With that said, what does Arcage have to do with this upcoming Ashes of Creation update? Well, yes, please. as most of you probably know, Arcage is a huge inspiration for Steven when it comes to Ash's core design. They're we've heard, we've heard, or at least I've heard. I don't know if you guys have, but yes, Arcage has played a huge role in inspiring the main... Uh, what I don't know what you want to call fat financier head developer uh, interest guy lead stakeholder if you will uh, yeah so the guy Steve that's at the top of this he loved Arc Age and that's a huge inspiration for Ashes of Creation. They're taking a lot of their interesting mechanics and using it as a base. One of these does indeed include Arcage's open world housing system that okay. has been reworked into their highly anticipated freeholds. Arcage's open world housing was a great idea. It really added a yeah. lot of personalization to each server, added some unique socialization as you got to know your neighbors, and it's just yeah. made the whole world feel alive. Uh, unfortunately, though, over time as Arcage degenerated into the I think that is a really cool idea. I think open world housing is such a well, just like you were saying, it's it's it makes it feel unique. Like the experience, depending on what server you're on, is actually unique. Uh, depending on where the housing areas are and where you go, uh, versus something like uh, Final Fantasy XIV, where you actually go off to a housing, like a designated housing area, and it's completely separate from the world. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think that's a good idea. I think it is cool to have open world housing pay to win mess that it is today some of these houses looked um clownish yeah <laughs> basically definitely. in the current year all housing locations in arcade are just immersion breaking multi-colored shit shows with <laughs> materials buildings and farm animals all crammed into tiny pieces of square land yeah. not ideal but it, it, it does look cluttered it definitely looks cluttered yeah that's true it's just a result of pioneering this particular type of mechanic. Yeah. One of the great things about Ashes of Creation is that the team at Intrepid can look at how these mechanics succeeded, but most importantly, they can look at it where they fell short and fix. That's the great opportunity, I will say, about a new MMO uh, studio, is that they have this template, this history, uh, just kind of laid out before them of all the, these other MMOs and the new systems and mechanics that they tried to introduce. And they can literally just cherry pick from each one and improve on those things and make those things better in their MMO. And they, they have this huge opportunity, every new MMO studio, to be like absolutely incredible and essentially like a wow killer to be the next big MMO. Uh, none of them have really done it super successfully yet. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a huge opportunity here with Ashes of Creation them retroactively and that's exactly what freeholds are okay. they've taken arcage's base idea of having open world houses in physical space and curated it to where it's not going to be tiny little clown houses all crammed into a zone because yeah. freeholds are instead large plots of land very akin to what you'd expect from wildstar and they are exclusive for a few reasons okay. one you cannot just place these anywhere anytime a node needs to be at least level three for freehold plots to even unlock. Two, Interesting. they're large plots of land for players to place many things in, not just a singular house. Three, they're limited to one per account as they're related to the citizenship system. That makes or sense. They're spread apart in a massive piece of land as indicated by video demonstrations in 2017. And finally, five, they're going to be difficult to obtain in the first place. So I don't- That makes sense. And I think that's a good thing. I think I, I think it, if every single person could have their own, you know, plot of land or whatever, I feel like uh, I feel like as a server issue, it wouldn't even be able to handle it. Like it should be a very, very like high tier, like hard to do thing. I I I don't know. That's just me, but I think so. Don't expect your average player to even own a freehold. Anyway, yeah. it is end game progression. 
and that's okay. Now, with all that said, this is again possibly outdated information, and uh, the most exciting thing about this month's update is yeah, getting yeah. a bunch of new and updated information with the freeholds in relation to the post tripling of the world map. With the freehold reworks, oh, right, part right, of right. the reason the world size tripled. <laughs> That could be it. That would actually make sense if the world size tripled just to like kind of accommodate all of these, you know, I don't know, forecasted or, you know, projected players getting their own freeholds. That would make sense. They, they would need space and size to, you know, to accompany that. Did the node changes significantly change the way freeholds work? How much Maybe. of the world's physical space will these freehold plots take up? All yeah. these questions are likely going to be answered this month. And as a copium enjoyer, this is very exciting to me. Yes. To end today's video, I, I just want to mention a few of the team's teases during the buildup of this highly anticipated update, which involves... Everybody make sure to huff your copium now, okay? Make sure you get a nice big dose. We, we've, we've got to hold strong here. We need our copium. Involves crafting and animal husbandry. As Richie very astutely observed during his video, the team have been showing us a plethora of oh, farmyard nice. animals. And as it's stated, freeholds in particular will provide the best processing stations for players. It'll what beautiful animals they've included for this game. They look so real, so lifelike. How nice. Fits together nicely because during October's Q&A, Stephen confirmed that animal husbandry in particular is a processing artisan wow. skill now. Okay. In the processing, we have metalworking, stone masonry, yep. weaving, tanning, yes. lumber milling, farming, animal husbandry, animal alchemy, husbandry, and cooking. I expect there it is. A heavy focus on this particular part of the freeholds. However, they've also teased another artisan skill, but this one falls within my tentative expectations. Okay. During the very same Q and A, Stephen explained about the crafting mechanics and how the blacksmithing skill, in particular, has a gameplay layer that we interact with. There is a gameplay. Hey, anything that makes kind of the crafting skills more interesting. I don't mean grindy, and I don't mean adding steps that make it feel unsatisfying. I just mean, like, anything that can make it feel more fun. Like, anything that makes it feel more real, more interactive in a good way, and more fun is a good thing to me. A layer to crafting. Um, and those professions that I listed for the crafting, when you go to create a particular item, you will have the opportunity to interface with that gameplay layer. Ah. And for example, and this is something you guys will, this will be probably one of the spot tests actually that's coming up before Alpha 2. For example, if you're creating a sword, you will have an interface, a gameplay layer that you will see and you will begin to hammer actually that sword into an appropriate outline. Interesting. There's a chance we may okay. see that this month, as it's also mentioned that it'll usher in the first of our player spot. So, random uh, correlation I'm making. So, this sounds similar to... Uh, so, if you've played Dragon Quest Eleven in Dragon Quest Eleven, when you forge uh, weapons and items, uh, it's a similar kind of thing. You have to work on different areas and get the, like, this meter to the right amount, and it creates the outline nicely. And if you mess up one section of the outline, then the whole item fails or whatever. If it's something similar, if I'm if I'm kind of getting that idea, like if you're working on the outline or you work on sections of the outline of the item and you have to forge it properly all over to make it be a successful forging, uh, that's that's an interesting system. I actually like that in Dragon Quest, so that would be cool to see here. Tests. Very exciting stuff indeed, but again, it's tentative. Mayhaps a dedicated stream for crafting is more suitable than trying to cram Probably. all this animal husbandry, housing, and freehold mechanics all into one stream. True, to true. To conclude today's video, though, I want to give you guys what I personally want to see from this month's live stream because Let's hear obviously it, the animal husbandry stuff is great and the freeholds itself is great and the housing is cool etc 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 yes. but what i really want to see yes. is thus i hope the stream starts and instead of standing outside an already built freehold in the middle of the riverlands right. i hope he starts at the gates of a node with a caravan full of building materials and yeah. he walks to the freehold location and begins to build it from there then transitions into the usual stuff that we've just discussed it that sounds cool that actually is a great idea yeah just seeing the whole process you walk into the node You've got all this, th these materials and supplies. You're you're ready to build your freehold and just show that process. Show what it actually looks like. That would be sick. 
it's not so much the mechanics of the freeholds itself that I care about. I have full faith that Intrepid will nail all of these and make the appropriate changes due yeah. to player feedback. What I really right. care about is the core mechanics behind how freeholds exist, the context of their existence in the world, and what it takes to actually build and progress it using the game's mysterious caravan and crate mechanics. Yeah. And as usual, I am just one nerd desperate for a good MMO. <laughs> My opinion means nothing without yours in the comments below. And hey, if you made it this far into the video, you'll probably coked out the wazoo like these Twitch subs here. So great video. I'm actually really happy with that. Yeah, the freeholds looking pretty promising, but I do agree. It would be really nice to see that caravan coming into the node. Uh, bringing those supplies and materials and seeing the process of building that that freehold from scratch or whatever that sounds pretty interesting and to see the scale of it compared to the world and compared to other freeholds and how far away they are and such that sounds really interesting to me this is getting me really excited again for ashes of creation well what do you guys think of the freehold system in ashes of creation is it interesting is it not let me know in the comments leave a like a subscribe and i will see you next time